Power system safety rules and documents are essential guidelines designed to protect workers and ensure the reliable operation of power systems. Let's explore why these rules exist and the benefits they provide. Take worker safety. Purpose of power system safety rules prioritize the safety of personnel working with high voltage electricity. They cover hazards associated with substations, high voltage cables, and communication facilities. For risk reduction, by adhering to safety rules, workers minimize their exposure to electrical hazards, reducing the risk of accidents, injuries, and fatalities. For infrastructure integrity, preventing damage, power system safety rules prevent accidental damage to critical infrastructure. Mishandling high voltage equipment can lead to costly repairs and prolonged outages. For asset protection, proper safety practices safeguard substations, transformers, and transmission lines, ensuring their longevity and functionality. For the continuity of supply, uninterrupted service, power systems must operate continuously to meet consumer demand. Safety rules prevent disruptions caused by accidents or unsafe practices. For minimizing downtime, by avoiding accidents, power outages are minimized, benefiting consumers, businesses, and essential, essential services. For compliance and accountability, legal requirements, power system safety rules often align with legal regulations and industry standards. Compliance ensures that organizations meet their obligations. For accountability, clear safety rules hold individuals accountable for their actions, promoting responsible behavior. For emergency preparedness, response efficiency, power system safety rules establish protocols for emergencies. When incidents occur, trained personnel can respond swiftly and effectively. For risk mitigation, preparedness reduces the impact of emergencies, protecting both workers and the public. For communication and training, standardization, having consistent safety rules ensures that all workers understand their responsibilities. For training programs organizations conduct power system safety rules training, educating employees on safe practices. This knowledge is crucial for preventing accidents. For culture of safety, promoting awareness, power system safety rules foster a safety conscious culture. When everyone follows the rules, it becomes ingrained in the organization's ethos. Behavioral change, regular reinforcement of safety practices encourages positive behavior and reduces complacency. Power system safety rules are not only about compliance, they are a fundamental aspect of maintaining a secure, reliable, and efficient power system. By prioritizing safety, we can protect both workers and the critical infrastructure that powers our lives. We will discuss few safety documents which are 1. Certificate of Electrical Isolation 2. Electrical Permit to Work 3. Sanction for Test 4. Transfer of Control Certificate 5. Limitation of Access 6. Certificate of Live LV Work 7. Earthing Schedule 8. Record of Inter-System Safety Precautions Certificate 9. Electrical Isolation and Earthing Diagram 10. Switching Schedule Now we will discuss Certificate of electric Electrical Isolation A Certificate of Electrical Isolation is to be issued when non-electrical work is to be carried out on or near to electrical equipment which must be isolated as a safety precaution for the duration of the work. An authorized person for HV, the issuer, issues and cancels a certificate of electrical isolation when used on high voltage equipment. An authorized person AP for LV, the issuer, issues and cancels a certificate of electrical isolation when used on low voltage equipment. Prior to offering a certificate of electrical isolation to the recipient, the issuer shall identify to the recipient the equipment that has been isolated. Identify the points of isolation. A certificate of electrical isolation may be transferred between persons in charge and may be cancelled by an authorized person who is not the original issuer. This process shall be in accordance with an approved procedure. A certificate of electrical isolation is a safety document used in the electrical industry. Here are the key points. Purpose It's issued by a qualified electrician or mechanic after all or part of an electrical system has been safely isolated. The aim is to ensure that an accidental release of any type of energy does not happen. Isolation 
Electrical isolation means disconnecting the electrical supply to an installation, appliance, machinery, plant, or equipment for safety. Protection Once the electrical supply has been isolated, the sources of isolation must then be protected so that the appliance, machinery, plant, or equipment cannot be negligently made live. Live. Procedure the isolation procedure involves getting permission to start work, identifying the means of power supply, isolating the supply, securing the isolation, proving that the system is dead and non-functional, and applying appropriate safety awareness. Preparation Before creating the isolation certificate, certain data can be prepared. This includes granting authorization to issue, review, and approve isolation certificates, identifying authorized personnel, creating an active permit to work type where isolation is specified, identifying the hazards associated with the electrical maintenance work, and developing procedures to identify and eliminate or mitigate the risks. Work Order A work order for the electrical maintenance work is created, associating the work order with the electrical equipment that needs to be maintained, and with the location. Management. An isolation certificate provides the details for the effective management of hazards in the workplace and as a method of communication between the personnel who are responsible for the operation of the plant and the personnel who plan and carry out the isolation activities. Please note that the exact procedures and requirements may vary depending on the specific regulations and standards in your location. In some utilities the safety documents issued on interconnection or within two power utilities interface point on high voltage when. Now we will discuss the electrical permit to work. An electrical permit to work is to be issued by a person when work is to be carried out by a person requiring access to conductors. Such conductors shall be isolated, made dead and earthed HV only for the duration of that work. Prior to offering a permit to work to the recipient, the issuer shall. Physically identify by marking the equipment to be worked on in the presence of the intended recipient. Show the recipient the isolation and earthing diagram and the safety arrangements at the points of isolation and at the point of work. Explain in detail to the recipient the exact extent of the work to be undertaken. Draw the attention of the recipient any special instructions or safety measure noted in Part 1 of the Permit to Work. Demonstrate to the satisfaction of the recipient that the equipment is dead and safe to work on. Where it is not practical to prove the equipment dead prior to issuing a permit to work, the issuer is to remain with and personally supervise the recipient in the removal of covers or plates. The issuer shall confirm the equipment is dead within the work area before allowing the recipient to assume control of the work. An electrical permit to work is a safety document used in various industries, particularly those dealing with hazardous processes. Here are the key points. Definition An electrical permit to work is a special authorization document that ensures adequate risk has been assessed for the process and a level of control has been put in place to reduce the severity, likelihood, and potential of an incident occurring. Purpose The purpose of the permit is to ensure that the electrical work is completed correctly according to local regulations. It is part of a systematic approach to managing risk through authority and authorization. Process The Permit to Work PTW system involves assessing the risks, establishing a proper safety protocol based on the risks, and proper communication throughout the entire process. Risk Identification The PTW system starts with identifying risks and hazardous areas and practices, practices within the organization. It also includes identifying the work scope and the risks that come with it. Authorized personnel. The system involves appointing the people who are authorized to handle hazardous tasks and the people in charge of keeping the processes as safe as possible. Training and monitoring. The PTW system involves training employees, regular briefings, establishing protocols, and monitoring the PTW system to ensure that it's doing its job of keeping the workers as safe as possible. Completion of work. Upon completion of work, the permit form needs to be handed back to the safety officer to sign off and retain a record of the form. Necessity. A PTW system is a necessary component of any business control of work system and is designed to handle and mitigate the risks that employees face on a daily basis. Please note that the exact procedures and requirements may vary depending on the specific regulations and standards in your location. 
A sanction for test is to be issued by a person when testing is to be carried out by a person requiring access to high voltage conductors. Such conductors shall be isolated, made dead and earthed at the commencement of the test. Prior to issuing a sanction for test, the issuer shall physically identify to the recipient the equipment on which the test is to be undertaken. Show the recipient the electrical diagram on the isolation and earthing diagram and the safety arrangements at the points of isolation and at the points of the tests. Explain in detail to the recipient the extent of the test to be undertaken. Draw to the attention of the recipient any special instructions or safety measures noted in Part 1 of the sanction for test. Demonstrate to the satisfaction of the recipient that the equipment is dead and safe to test. Where it is not practical to prove the equipment dead prior to issuing a sanction for test, the issuer having issued the sanction for test is to remain with, with and personally supervise the recipient in the removal of covers or plates. The issuer shall confirm the equipment is dead within the work area before allowing the recipient to assume control of the test. A sanction for test is a safety document used in the electrical industry. Here are the key points. Definition a sanction for test is a form of declaration issued by an authorized person to another authorized person in charge of testing of electrical apparatus equipment. Purpose The purpose of this document is to make known to such person correctly what equipment is to be tested and the condition under which the testing is to be carried out. Safety document It is a safety document specifying the high voltage apparatus made safe for testing and the conditions under which the testing is to be carried out. Preparation Before issuing a sanction for test, certain data can be prepared. This includes granting authorization to issue, review, and approve isolation certificates, identifying authorized personnel, creating an active permit to work type where isolation is specified, identifying the hazards associated with the electrical maintenance work, and developing procedures to identify and eliminate or mitigate the risks. Work Order a work order for the electrical maintenance work is created, associating the work order with the electrical equipment that needs to be maintained, and with the location. Management A sanction for test provides the details for the effective management of hazards in the workplace and as a method of communication between the personnel who are responsible for the operation of the plant and the personnel who plan and carry out the isolation activities. Please note, note that the exact procedures and requirements may vary depending on the specific regulations and standards in your location. Let's discuss a transfer of control certificate, which is to be used to transfer responsibility for control of an existing system from the duty SAP on a non-permanent basis. The recipient of the certificate shall be a company SAP, a contractor, or a suitably authorized person from a third party. The certificate is to be used to ensure that a safe system of work is in place by formally recognizing the demarcation of responsibility for control in two or more parts of a system or adjacent systems. The certificate shall define whether the part of the system to be transferred is live or dead and also define demarcation points, isolation points, and any safety implications. This information shall also be detailed on an accompanying electrical network diagram. Before the transfer of control certificate is issued, the person who is to issue the certificate shall ensure that the recipient fully understands the extent and nature of the transfer. Physically identify to the recipient that art of the network can be disconnected from its supply in an emergency. Ensure that the recipient understands which company's electrical safety procedures shall be applied to all activities associated with that part of the network being transferred. A transfer of control certificate is a safety document used in the electrical industry. Here are the key points. Definition A transfer of control certificate is a document that signifies the transfer of control over an electrical system or equipment from one party to another. Purpose The purpose of this document is to ensure that the party taking control is fully aware of the condition of the system or equipment and the responsibilities associated with its op operation. Safety document it is a safety document that provides a record of the transfer of control, including details of the system or equipment, the parties involved, and the date and time of the transfer. Preparation Before issuing a transfer of control certificate, certain data can be prepared. This includes granting authorization to issue, review, and approve the certificate, identifying authorized personnel, 
creating an active permit to work type where isolation is specified, identifying the hazards associated with the electrical maintenance work, and developing procedures to identify and eliminate or mitigate the risks. Work order. A work order for the electrical maintenance work is created, associating the work order with the electrical equipment that needs to be maintained, and with the location. Management. A transfer of control certificate provides the details for the effective management of hazards in the workplace and as a method of communication between the personnel who are responsible for the operation of the plant and the personnel who plan and carry out the isolation activities. Please note that the exact procedures and requirements may vary depending on the specific regulations and standards in your location. Limitation of access. In an area or location that is normally under the control of an authorized person for electrical safety reasons, a limitation of access may be issued by an authorized person the issuer for any specified task, other than one for which a permit to work or sanction for test is required. When the authorized person considers that additional guidance and warning of danger is required over and above verbal guidance and warning. Prior to offering a limitation of access to the recipient, the issuer shall Accompany the recipient to the location where the work is to be undertaken. Confirm with the recipient in detail the exact extent of the work activities to be undertaken, undertaken, including the scope and limits. Show the recipient the area in which the work is to be undertaken. Indicate to the recipient all items of live electrical equipment in or adjacent to the working area that are to be identified by danger signs. Draw to the attention of the recipient any special instruction or safety measure noted in Part 1 of the Limitation of Access, and indicate the safety measures that have been applied by the issuer. Certificate of Live LV Work The Certificate of Live LV Work refers to a certification that allows qualified personnel to work on or near live low-voltage LV equipment. This is part of the safety protocols established by many utilities to ensure the safety of their workers and the integrity of their electrical systems. Grid code provides guidance on the principles established by the safety rules for personnel working on or near to low voltage equipment. This includes work on current transformer secondary circuits. Staff are required to be nominated as electrically competent by their line manager. This ensures that only qualified personnel are allowed to work on or near live LV equipment, thereby minimizing the risk of accidents and ensuring the safe operation of the electrical grid. Please note that the specific requirements and procedures may vary. The earthing schedule in the safety rules refers to a set of procedures and guidelines that dictate how earthing should be carried out when working on or near electrical equipment. This is crucial for ensuring the safety of personnel and the integrity of the electrical system. Here are some key points about the earthing schedule. Application of earthing devices. The earthing schedule provides guidance on the use of earthing devices to achieve safety from the system for personnel working on or near to high voltage equipment in substations. Safety document procedures. The earthing schedule is as part of the safety document procedures, which are detailed guidelines that must be followed when carrying out work on or near electrical equipment. Updates and reviews. The earthing schedule is regularly reviewed and updated to reflect changes in safety standards and operational requirements. Specific Work Scenarios The earthing schedule includes guidance for specific work scenarios, such as the replacement of suspension insulators and spacers. Please note that the specific requirements and procedures may vary. Record of Inter-System Safety Precautions Certificate Electricity distribution network operators are required to have a procedure for work or testing at the interface when it is necessary for two or more senior authorized, or authorized persons to work together to establish and maintain safety from the system across the control boundary. The requesting party initially defines their requirements for isolation and earthing on the record of inter-system safety precautions certificate. Once the responding party has undertaken actions in the correct sequence to achieve the necessary safety precautions and recorded them on the RISSP certificate, it can be issued by the responding party confirming the status of the equipment and declaring that there will be no instructions issued to remove the safety precautions previously established before the RISSP certificate is cancelled by the requesting party. There are three situations in which this procedure will be used. Work carried out by the customer on their own equipment which can be energized by the company or the customer. Work carried out by the company on its own equipment which can be energized by the company or the customer. 
Work to be carried out simultaneously by both the company and the customer on their own equipment which can be energized by the company or the customer. Electrical Isolation and Earthing Diagram Prior to the issue of any permit to work or sanction for test, an isolation and earthing diagram sh shall be completed illustrating the safety arrangements at the points of isolation and the place of work, which have been implemented to make the equipment safe for the execution of the work or test. An isolation and earthing diagram shall show the name, signature and location of the originating senior authorized person. The name, signature and location of the countersigning senior authorized or authorized person. The date the countersign program is to commence. The purpose of the proposed work or test. The equipment that the proposed sequence of operations will make safe for the work or test to be undertaken. The cables and equipment to be worked on or tested. The points of isolation. The points of earthing. The points of work or test. Any safety locks and safety signs fitted. The system as is when ready for the issue of the permit to work or sanction for test. The serial number of the associated switching schedule, permit to work and or sanction for test. The isolation and earthing diagram shall then be attached to the permit to work or sanction for test prior to its issue. Switching schedule. A switching schedule is to be prepared by a senior authorized person, detailing the intended sequence of safety operations to be performed to make the relevant equipment safe for the execution of the work or the test. When a switching schedule has been completed it shall be countersigned by another senior authorized or authorized person who has a detailed working knowledge of the particular system involved. The senior authorized person shall satisfy himself of the presence, if any, of any operational restrictions on the equipment involved in the switching. The switching schedule shall detail the sequence of operations to be undertaken up to and including the issue and cancellation of a certificate of electrical isolation, permit to work or sanction for test and the system restoration process, including the location, including any name and identification code, at which each operation is to be performed, the identity of each item of switchgear to be operated, the operation to be performed and the reason for the operation. Any items required e.g. keys, locks, safety signs, protective equipment, handles, documentation, etc. The requirement for an accompanying safety person for a specific operation.